Hey, Jan here, the founder of Chaos Map and the author of The Ultimate Guide to Search Engine Optimization. Hey, have you ever wondered how to really optimize web pages for search? Well, stay tuned. As I mentioned, optimizing web pages are very important, but really, how do you do it, right? Well, I'm going to share with you today the tips, the insight, the strategies, and the things that we use to elevate pages in search engine results. And clients love it. I hope you love it too. So let me share these essentials with you today, and I hope you stick with it all the way, because at the end, I'm gonna share some cool examples with you, and of course, you'll get the download at the very end also. So please stay with it, enjoy, and have a great day, evening, or night. And hey, how are you? This is Jan, I'm back here. This is the official how to optimize a web page. This is a video presentation here to show you how pages can rock and how they can do that for search engines. Now, without further ado, we're gonna dive right in, but I'm excited, I'm fired up because man, there's some cool rules and let's start with rule number one. It's so obvious, but yet, no, many don't do this. Create awesome value. Add value to your marketplace and make it about them. Think about their needs, their wants, their desires. Think about their problems, issues, challenges, and create opportunities and solutions for them. This is the classic uh, you know, headache pill in the morning, right? Starts out real bad. They go and search for information and you know things to help them. They find you, and then they get this awesome little dog. How about that? Well, guess what? We're not done. Here's another awesome rule. This is sort of in order of priority, right? Right around this of value is the notion of quality content. Now, if you arrive at a hotel or some kind of a resort and, you know, nobody invites you, nobody takes care of you, nobody shows you attention, there's really not what we call the five-star hotel treatment. Oh, how do you feel? You're just going to bail. You're not going to come back. That's for darn sure, right? Well, the same on the web. Your website and your web pages now, in specific we're talking about, provide quality content that speaks to your audience. And again, ties in very closely to the previous one, add value. Here's one, cool graphics. Well, what does that all mean? Well, certainly the way that you use these graphics, right? Intelligent use, uh, spacing, white spacing, uh, basically positioning these elements so that they speak and support the content that's on the pages, combinations of content, you know, video, of course, you have uh, slide share opportunities for inclusion, you know, podcasting. We certainly don't want to see anything like this, right? Get it out of there, okay? However, you might have a great product, so that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making it awesome through cool graphics. And, and with that said, sharing quality, very, very important. Will actually people share it? You know, if you think about your content and as you have pushed it out there, do you think people will share it or is more like a filler? Well, then go back, revise it and push it out again. And also you may want to test this on an internal audience or some of your customers and clients, prospects even who are close to you that want to see this and uh, get some ideas what this uh, uh, will do before you actually launch it. And clearly tying into all of this is, gets a little bit analytical here, right? But we speak about bounce rates. Uh, we talk a lot about this. In fact, when we look behind the scenes at the heartbeat, really the nervous system, central nervous system for your website is in the analytics. You can actually find out what people are doing and many more uh, uh, metrics behind there. But one here, as we're talking about optimizing pages, right? It's high engagement, readership, and stickiness. We want people to come back, certainly. We want people to stay. We want that bounce rate to be low. And the bounce rate is simply this. Uh, 100 people come to your site, your analytics show that 90% bounce within seconds, you got 10% left. What happened to those 90? Something is up, potentially. This has got to be tested, but it's a big metric that you should fully understand. Scan and eat it. How about this? I mean, it looks a little funky, this meal right here. But the truth is people scan the web. They don't read the web. So you want to make it easily consumable. They got to get this in and they got to actually get some value quickly and they got to understand it. So, you know, this is a very important point, breaking it up, breaking it into bullets, breaking it into sections. You know, maybe you can even use some kind of an inline anchor text to deal, right? Make this easy and have them scan it and then they can eat the pieces they want, right? Now, all of this ties into a great layout, a great structure, a great design, interaction, 
professional page look and feel. I mean, how simple is that? Yet, this is not a, a black and white situation. You got to look at your marketplace. You got to work with your designers, and you got to make this a great, great uh, contribution to your website. A, a great layout should not be missed. I mean, if you have great content, that's awesome, right? But if you can't support it with a great layout and the ease of navigation and a professional page that says, hey, we're an authority, well, you have lost the game of sorts, right? So you want to make sure that you get this right. Here's another rule. Very important. People forget this. Speed. Well, we love speed, but what for websites and for web pages, we want fast loading, efficient HTMLs. We want that code to just rock. We want server infrastructure uh, to be uh, certainly available at 99.999% uh, if we can. Um, and of course, here we're dealing with readers who are consuming, going fast on the web, and they may have found your site, but they have many competitors before you. Many are coming up behind you. How do you stick? Well, you show them great quality content, all the things we've spoken about so far, and then you show them a fast loading page. It couldn't be better. Plus, guess what? Search engines love it too, so speed it up, man. Okay, words central to everything we're doing on the web today. Uh, topical keywords. It's really just simply this. Associate the primary and secondary terms on your web page that speaks to that topic. So if you want to think about relationship between terms, that's also a very important component. But just a natural distribution of words and keywords in this case, that is what people are searching for. And that is spread out through your page naturally. Uh, I often will say uh, frequency is an important aspect, but it's really prominence and proximity as well. Those are the relationships. I know this gets a little technical, but uh, boy, boy, you can't believe the pages that we see that they're trying to actually get listed for in search engines and ranked is another key term you heard here. Why is it not happening? Well, they don't have the keywords on there. They have not done the research. They have not actually discovered which ones are the right terms for them. So I'm going a little off on this. It's an important topic. It speaks all to the SEO authority, right? You want to create this for yourself, for your website, uh, for your pages, and get those keywords, as I said, on there. But more than that, the stuff you don't see behind the scenes, what we call meta tags. You want to get those set up. You want the proper lengths. You want the, the right attributes set to the right areas. H1 tags, alt attributes. All of these things that matter that search engines look at. Now, it's not the end all be all here. You do this right and all of a sudden you rank. No, there's more to it, right? But each and every market has its own set of problems. And if you're a brand new website, you have a different set of issues than if you're an established brand and been around for several years and maybe a decade or more, right? But think about this. All of the things that I've talked about leads up to just an, a series of, uh, of great rules for you, including this one, in and outbound linking. So when you write great quality content and you think about them, what do you do? Well, you link out to resources that could help them. Don't be afraid to actually do that, to share that, share in the community. Um, so get the links out. But certainly as you do this, you will acquire naturally inbound links. People will link to you and share back. And this gives you an authority and a trust that really works well in the search engine. So be strategic about this. I know this is a very quick here. We're not doing a, a strategy session or a, a day training or a weekend training on link building. But this is an important area still in the search engine's eyes. And this is what Google was founded on when they got established back in 1998. So here we go. Moving now into sort of current day and social, right? Social is big. And these are signals that search engines are starting to take into play more and more. Social integration and make the page easy to share socially. So the big tip here is add the widgets, right? Make sure that you put the Facebook, the Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And, and certainly the ones that are related to your marketplace, the ones that speak to your audience and where you know the audience is at, right? You want to make sure that it's easy to do. And don't forget this. When you do that, make sure you share the right elements. I mean, I'm sure you've been to pages where you want to share it. You think it's a great page. You go to Facebook and you share it. It comes up with some gook, weird URL, doesn't even have the pictures, and the description itself is poor. Well, you need to mark up these pages so that the social widgets can use them. And we talk about Facebook, Open Graph, Twitter cards, etc. And, uh, you know, if this gets technical, don't worry about it. You don't have to do this all at once, right? I'm just giving you the rules here. Google authorship's another... Uh, 
uh, markup uh, code that you can uh, add to your site. It's a essentially a snippet uh, that supports uh, authors and uh, and sites. And you see this working when a little picture show up in the search engine results. So use the mighty Google Pen here. And uh, as the future here ensues, we're going to see more and more indicators for validity and around ranking. It's not all there yet, but it's happening, man. So get on this bandwagon. Higher click-throughs, yes, you want them. Well, guess what? If you're not uh, number one in the Google research uh, results, right, uh, search results, well, you can add what's called rich snippets. You can actually uh, play with your descriptions. Uh, your Essentially, it's like mini advertising that goes on your pages that shows up in the results that actually you in a position three would win out the clicks over position one in most of the cases based on what they're looking for. This gets into psychology and emotional triggers and a lot of different things. You got to do your research here, but make sure you think about this. How could I actually get more people to click through on me even though I'm not number one? That's a big one, man. Here's another rule. Localization. And, and we talk about local businesses, yes, but international, right? And in all of this, who's your audience? Where are they? What languages? You may decide to establish a top-level domain in another country and create some custom landing pages for that and drive ads and traffic in that language. How about a local office, right? How many do you have? Do you have any inter international concerns? Well, think about these things too. Now, again, you don't have to do this all at once, right? I'm giving you some of the rules. And we're going to look at an example here. It's a live session I'm going to take you through next. And we can kind of scroll through some pages so you can see this working and how other people have been doing it. So I'll, uh, I'll swip, uh, swap this screen here and we'll dive right into it. All right, let's do it. Hello, Jan here. We are back. Uh, we are on my desktop. I'm going to share. Uh, this will be very quick. We're not going to go through all of them, but I just want to give you a sense for this in a live session here. Uh, typed in how to write a blog. But before I do that, let me just take you through uh, a couple of notes here. Um, there are so many different types of websites today. And you know, you, you may be in a different marketplace completely, right? Uh, if you're in the blogging space, that's one thing. If you're in the, uh, you know, commerce space, that's another. You may have more of a brochureware type uh, of website, uh, you know, company pages, etc. cetera. Uh, you might have a, a content-driven system. Anyway, all of these, there's so many different ways in which we can approach this. But the rules, I'm telling you right now, apply to all. So with just that sort of a preface there, uh, we're going to dive in. And we'll show an example of a, a couple of different types here today. But we're going to start with a, with a blog. And when I type this, how to write a blog, uh, Darren comes up. There's the picture. Remember I talked about uh, Google authorship, you know, the, uh, the markup code and all that? Well, here's a chance for you to tweak that and tune that and, and get that working. Well, we're not going to get into technical detail. I'm just going to click in. This appears to be a, a compilation here. Uh, just been here briefly before. And uh, so so essentially here, I'm going to just uh, type uh, or click how to craft a blog post. Take a look at this. A strong headline, right to the point, right? It has some levels of categorization here. We're not going to get into that, taxonomies and layout of content, etc. But right away, there's a social widget, there's a social widget, right? We talked about image, good image use, you know, right there. Publish, publish, publish. <laughs> Keeps on going, breaking up the copy, bold facing, easy to read here. We're scrolling down very quickly. There's our bullet list. You know, remember I talked about the uh, scan and eat. Here I can choose what I want to get to very, very quickly. And we have some summary and that's the end of the post. And of course we have the awesome social sharing uh, community with commenting, etc. Well, let's take a look at another one here. It's a little different market. Uh, we're on search engine watch right now, but similarly here we have the social widgets, easy to share here. We have this content broken up even more so, uh, detailed by categories, consumer holidays, retail top sales day, uh, uh, sales days. This even has header bullets within uh, at the top level, and then within that you have sub bullets, right? You have image use. I talked a lot about that. Chunking out the content, easy to scan here and to read the pieces that I want. Same thing again, and we have the social widgets. Notice it's expanded, and here we're more in the B two B community. Uh, added this out to Pinterest, etc. And of course, the commenting, uh, different ways in which you can do it. Very engaging, uh, very good for uh, search and social. Now, remember I talked about um, kind of a different marketplace, more of a brochure where this is an example of that. Very common in the B2B space. Uh, I work a lot with this. There's some social widgets down here, but it's really not intended to drive uh, to this page. It's just, if you will, kind of thing. And it's thrown sort of as a, as a matter of fact of, on there. But I was looking at a case study here. So uh, aerospace and materials processing. 
So here's a little bit of background. It's broken up, but this is not a blog post, right? This is more of a brochure where, as I was talking about, uh, sharing some case studies, etc. Well, they could actually have this in a PDF download somewhere. They could actually allow this to be shared by having some ser simple social buttons here. But the thing is, when you talk to companies like this, they may not find that interesting. Why? Because they are not in the space of doing this, uh, what I would call sort of commerce-based or B2C uh, engagement. Uh, this is a referral-based business. Now, a lot of the people in this space can certainly um, uh, learn a lot from getting an email capture here and uh, uh, get some downloads uh, straight to their inbox. And there's many ways you can tweak this, but this, this requires a complete different strategy and a discussion uh, on what the approach is to raise business, uh, uh, business for them. Uh, but let me get back to sort of the blogging space here for a second. This is Copy Blogger here, Brian Clark. Uh, very popular post, 10 Surefire uh, Headline Formulas at Work. Look at all the shares here. Well, tremendous pull here and push uh, for uh, this website. And uh, this is the classic breakout by top 10 list, top etc. list. Who else wants blank? The secret of blank. It's broken out, very engaging. If I wanted to just scan this, which I'm doing now very, very quickly, I can get a sense for what appeals to me, uh, what, what engages with me, and what I might stop at, what everybody ought to know about. Well, I'd like to learn more about that. Bam, bam, bam. You can see it right here. Same thing again, down at the bottom, related posts, social share, and of course we got all the nice comments here which is it's just packed uh, full of comments here and of course here in this case hey you want to get some more updates uh, subscribe right all of this stuff is part of what we talk uh, about search and social today so it's just a very quick example here today I wanted to share it with you but I hope you've joined it to sort of see how these things tie together and how you can start applying some of these you don't have to do them all at once and little by little you can actually see your engagement and your opportunities for traffic and engagement across the board go up. So I hope you enjoyed that. See you shortly. Watch this next bit here. All right. Well, that's the presentation for today. Uh, I'm glad you stuck with it. We are at the end. And of course, what I'd like you to do is please share because I said so. No, if you enjoy this, please go ahead and share it. It's a pleasure for me to make this for you. It's been fun doing it. And I hope you learned something and take action on these items. And of course, please reach out. I'd glad to answer questions for you. And I hope you have a great day, evening or night. Okay, yawn out. Later. <laughs>